sorry I'm running a little late as usual but not as late as I do a lot of times and I hope that this is actually broadcasting live and not privately as it always does so anyway welcome to mystery Mondays today I am finishing up the case of Jason Dubois death um, in Springdale Arkansas at the end of this vlog I will discuss updates to cases I have previously discussed which actually there were not any that I could find um, really as stated in the title this is part three covering the case of Jason Dubois on the evening of December the 9th 2021 Jason was riding four-wheelers with a friend the two had fueled their four-wheelers at the home where Jason lived Jason did have some trouble with his four-wheeler stalling but loved riding ATVs and knew how to repair and maintain them. And there's another comment on that that I'm going to make later on. The friends, um, the two friends left Jason's home and planned to ride through a tunnel and back to his home. And they may have been planning to ride a little bit more than that, but Jason never rode for more than a couple of hours at a time. However, from the time they had left his home to the time his friend walked back up to the home was approximately six hours. Where had he been and what was he doing all that time? Did he get lost? He said his four-wheeler mm. got stuck. Oh my gosh, I threat to turn off my volume. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, he said his four-wheeler got stuck and then ran out of gas. And of course, my friend is going to text me nonstop while I'm doing a live vlog because I forgot to turn off my ringer. <sighs> Jason's case is supposed to be closed according to police, but there are many questions concerning whether or not it was just an accident and if any charges should have been filed concerning his death. Um, I don't think this is going public because no one's joined me. Anyway, um, and of course I already asked some of those questions like the friend did not make come back to the house until six hours after they had left and of course they did work on the four-wheelers a couple of times apparently. Um, but where was he and what was he doing and you know did he maybe get turned around in the woods and get lost or something? Those are a few of the questions turning Jason's death. Respect for law enforcement and no at certain times of year. Pre Thanksgiving through New Year's Day, um, pre Thanksgiving through New Year's Day being one of those busiest times. Go ahead, Damon. Nope, okay. Dog on the ramp there. Um, I am sure they did the best job they could with the information they had. Did they have all of the important information concerning Jason's death, though? Only one person really knows that, and that is the person he was riding four-wheelers with that night into the next morning. Um, it's believed actually that he did die that night, though according to his um, obituary, I almost said autopsy, according to his, uh, oh my gosh, according to his obituary, he died the day after. Um, I think that they recorded it as that because that was when he was found. Though I'm not sure that the accident is recorded to have happened, reported to have happened on December the 9th of 2021. Though authorities deemed his death an accident, they later changed his accident report to an incident report. And I had stated before that it's my understanding that any time that the police encounter people or something happens, they are required to fill out an incident report. But I'm guessing from what my source has told me that now there is not an accident report for his case. There is only the incident report. I could be wrong about that, but that is my understanding. The friend Jason had been riding with had told other people he was there when two of his other friends 
had died in four-wheeler accidents. As I stated in prior vlogs about Jason Dubois, I know ATVs can be very dangerous, but it seems too huge to only be a coincidence to me that he has now been present when three of his friends have died in four-wheeler accidents. Maybe he just hangs around a whole lot of people that ride four-wheelers and, you know, therefore that is the truth. But anyway, just my opinion. It is rumored that this friend also took a shower with another man, not necessarily together, but they showed up at another friend's home together and both took showers around the time of Jason's death. It may have been before the four-wheeler ride or later the day um, that Jason was found, but the friend whose home they took the showers at thought that it was early in the morning that Jason died or late the night um, that they had been riding four-wheelers I have seen pictures of the accident scene, which I will talk more about in a few minutes. Authorities think he drove, um, Jason that is, they think that Jason drove on the embankment shortly before the bridge, then went off to the left side of the bridge um, where there were, there are like some steps that help to support the bridge. They believe that he jumped the first concrete abutment of the bridge then his front tire hit the second concrete abutment, causing his accident. Jason rode this area all the time. He knew this area very well and knew that the bridge was there. What caused him to veer to the left before or on the bridge? His friend said the four-wheeler he was riding got stuck before the bridge. In the pictures, you can see obvious tire marks. Ugh, I try not to do these when I'm really tired, but I've had such bad insomnia lately, guys. I am so sorry. So, in the pictures, which I wish that I knew how to edit into my vlogs, but I don't yet, you can see obvious tire marks to the left of the track. This is a train track we're talk I'm talking about here. It does look like someone spun their tires there for about 500 feet or so. In my opinion, that's about the distance it looks like. Um, probably not quite that far. Actually, it's probably more like 100 feet or so. Perhaps he veered left for the same reason Jason did, or Jason veered left because he saw or heard the other four-wheeler. Now, the thing that keeps coming to my mind in the Ozarks in December is deer. There are a lot of deer in town, and the specific area that this is referring to, not too far from there, I hit a deer um, one time. So, I, I have, I'm wondering if there were maybe a couple of deer on the track or something that caused both of them to veer to the left. And from what I understand, the friend hasn't said anything along that line, if that was the case. It is said there wasn't much blood at the scene, and when I saw the picture of the abutment, I expected there to be blood on it. Authorities believe his four-wheeler's front tire hit the concrete abutment, causing him to flip perpendicular to the ground, hitting his head on the same abutment, um, the same abutment that his tire had hit, which they believe killed him instantly. Then he fell to the left side of the bridge. His head sustained two injuries in the same spot. So I thought maybe the first hit, um, I thought maybe he had first hit his head on the track, then on the abutment, but I see no blood on either the track or the abutment in the pictures. 
There are no good Samaritan laws in the state of Arkansas, apparently. So if Jason's friend did see his accident, um, he stayed at, if he stayed at his side when, while he died, but opted not to get help for him and did not, um, and did nothing in order to help him, there's nothing illegal about that in the state of Arkansas. Because there are no good Samaritan laws, there's nothing stating that you have to have to help someone you see who you think or know might be dying. The other four-wheeler was definitely close enough to where Jason died that his friend should have seen or heard what happened. It was dark outside, a calm at night, and it actually wasn't even that cold for December. Um, the low that night was in the mid 40s and the winds were low from zero to about 11 miles per hour, which I thought perhaps maybe a gust of wind came and caused them to steer too far to the left or something, but the wind was not that strong. The moon was between a new moon and a first quarter, almost to the first quarter, almost entirely to the first quarter. The first quarter actually occurred the night after he died, so there, I'm not sure how high in the sky or what times the moon would actually be visible during that phase, but when the moon was out, it was close to a quarter moon, so it wasn't um, real, I mean, you know, it's not like it was a new moon or anything. When I teach myself to add pictures to my vlogs, I will do another vlog about Jason Dubois and include the pictures. I have to add, bleh, I'm sorry, I have, hmm, include the pics I have, though some will require a bit of editing. That's what I was saying. I will include the pictures that I have, though some will require a bit of editing. I think I need to get a green screen, you know, put up behind me, make a PowerPoint, and get a projector to show the pictures um, that I have and add them to my vlogs, perhaps. I think that might be the best way to do it. I recently saw a video where that was what the person did, and I was like, hmm, that's a good idea. Anyway, and because if you edit them in, you have to watch it and be like, oh, that's where I want a picture to be, you know, and that seems really inconvenient to me personally. Um, so back to Jason's story. There are a few trees and bushes between where the friend stashed the four-wheeler, where it was when the police arrived and found it, and um, where he stashed the four-wheeler he had been riding, and where the bridge is. This may have muffled the sound and view some, but if you have seen the other two installments, you know that he did state to friends that he had seen Jason fly by him and watched him go down the track over the bridge, um, and you know he watched him until he couldn't see him anymore. And perhaps since the trees were where they were, perhaps he couldn't even see him make it to the bridge. I don't know for sure. But he also said that he heard what sounded like groaning and or moaning, and he thought that it was people having sex underneath the bridge. So the sound he heard came, he knew or believed, from underneath the bridge, right? More than likely, this was Jason after he had his accident, which means he did not die instantly, sadly. In the picture of the abutment that has his tire um, skid mark on it and also a mark from the rim of the tire, I noticed there is what looks like a metal or concrete brace, which in this picture looks like it's right under the abutment. It looks like it could have blood on it. But if it is metal, this could be rust. And I have more comments on this as I looked at the various pictures while I was writing this information. It's not rust, it's not metal, it's concrete. And um, I will tell you more about that here in a little bit. 
In another picture, as I said, I can see they are concrete and are a fair distance below the abutment, though the bridge is said to be between 15 and 50 feet high, which is quite a difference. Um, but it's said to be between those two. To me, it looks like it's probably about 30 to 40 feet high, maybe a little bit more um, in one of the pictures that shows it from a distance. And I do have a little bit more on the thing that I'm talking about um, that looked like it was directly below the abutment in the one picture and in the other one you can tell it was further down. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that here in a minute. Jason's friend claimed he got stuck in the woods before the bridge and tried to get unstuck, then ran out of gas. Um, he has a couple of different differing stories on where he got stuck and such. I believe that he also told someone that he got stuck on the track. Um, and then he said that he got stuck in the woods. And then he also said that he got stuck on the gravel before the bridge, which I will discuss more here in a minute. Um, and as I said, he did run out of gas. In the pictures, his four-wheeler is facing out of the woods. Now it's actually, in my personal opinion, facing at basically the same angle that Jason's four-wheeler is facing underneath the bridge. It's like both of them are facing back the direction they would have been coming from and at a slight angle toward the left for the direction that they're facing, um, if I recall correctly from looking at the pictures. So yeah, it's facing out of the woods, not into the woods. However, if he also veered off the left side of the track, his four-wheeler may have spun around before he got stuck. Or it may have spun around because he was stuck if he was stuck on the gravel, as he said, and then he may have ended up getting stuck again in the woods, you know, um, it's hard to say. That I could tell the weather was not wet around this time, but because of this storm drainage ditch that ran underneath this bridge, it may have been slightly damp. And the fact that it was night, um, part of the time there's some pretty thick dew or frost. I mean, it was 45, there shouldn't have been frost, but there might have been pretty thick dew on the ground. Um, it is said that Jason did sometimes go down to the left of the bridge and under it. But he wouldn't have done that where the supports for the front of the bridge are, as I mentioned a while ago, there's like, it looks kind of like railroad ties and they like step down gradually. Um, and they're thinking that he hit, that he tried to go down where the first two of those are and jump the first abutment and hit the second one. But it is said that he would not have done that. He would have gone further to the left logically and around those step, those wooden step thingies because he would know that if he hit the wooden steps, it wouldn't be good, right? And he did know this area and knew the bridge because he often rode there. He would have gone farther to the left, as I said, and around those wooden supports for the front of the bridge. Um, so the only noted injuries on Jason's body were two head injuries that were directly on top of his head um, in the same spot or basically the same spot. They like overlapped at least. Just why I thought maybe he hit part hit his head on the track and then the abutment um, or something along that line. And there were um, also some minor scratches and abrasions on the very top of his forehead, like literally this area right here. If I do my hand this way, it's too thick, but like literally right here. He had a, a few scratches and abrasions on his forehead. It's hard to believe he fell so far and didn't break any other bones or scrape his hands. I'm not saying it's impossible, only that it's hard for me to believe. His head injuries were from blunt force trauma and caused severe swelling of his head, making his face unrecognizable. And I kind of feel like the reason that the people who found him knew for a fact it was him was because his four-wheeler was nearby and one of them was the guy who had been riding with him and he knew what he was wearing. 
and the other friend may have also known what he was wearing. From another picture, I now see those other concrete braces are at the very bottom of the bridge, like they're connected to the ground underneath the bridge, right? So what I thought may have been additional blood is very likely mud from the cement drainage ditch that runs below the bridge, um, like the storm drain thing. When Jason's four-wheeler had been stalling, and I also told you all this is about the working on his four-wheeler when it was stalling, right? When Jason's four-wheeler had been stalling near the gas station, it was actually his friend who worked on the four-wheeler and got it running better, not Jason. Jason was talking to someone else while the friend worked on the ATV. This gave his friend opportunity to tamper with the four-wheeler Jason was riding on. He may not have but he did have that opportunity. That is all I'm saying about that. Jason was last seen by another person between 10.15 and 10.30 p.m. on December 9th, 2021. How did Jason's friend's four-wheeler end up in the woods? Did he also veer left for some reason and run off? into the woods. He did tell at least one person, as I stated a while ago, that he got stuck on the grub on the gravel, I'm sorry, on the gravel, right in front of the bridge on the left hand side. I feel that explains the tire tracks to the left of the train track that look to me like someone spun their tires on the gravel. When I was talking about like a 500 um, foot area that actually is probably more like a hundred feet maybe not even quite that far but it does look to me like someone spun their tires on the gravel there and that may have happened because he was stuck right um how exactly he got stuck just on the gravel i have no idea but i suppose it is possible the railroad police chief did verify that Jason's friend's four-wheeler or the four-wheeler of Jason's that the friend was riding had in fact run out of gas. He stated they had to put gas in the four-wheeler in order to remove it from the crime scene. He was one of the authorities who worked the crime scene. Um, this railroad police chief was. Jason always wore a headlamp when he was riding his four-wheeler instead of using the headlights, partly because he did not like drawing attention to himself and the fact that he was riding his four-wheeler, right? His headlamp was found on the ground near him, but had no blood on it. His hat and glasses were covered in blood, as was an earphone, that was still in one of his ears, um, like an earbud type, you know, the ones that go inside of your ear. Um, it is believed that he was wearing his hat when he had the accident, though one of his friends who found him said that his hat was near his body. Um, and I don't know, like, if he was wearing it when he hit his head. I don't know if it could have possibly come off after that. Depends on how far maybe he fell. Um, maybe when his when he hit the ground, it came off. I don't I don't know if that would be possible or not. The two people who found him gave statements to the police, um, and one of those was the friend who had been writing with him. It is said that his wife also gave a statement to police. I believe she was also there when his body was found um, or was nearby. She wasn't one of the ones that found him, but I believe she was nearby, had gone with the friends to look for him. Excuse me. The friend who found him but wasn't the one who had been riding four-wheelers with him went to the, the police station to give his statement a couple of weeks after the accident 
because he was traumatized and couldn't handle reliving finding his friend dead, which is understandable in my opinion. Now, police did not go to him ever and ask if he would give a statement or could give a statement. He went to them. I don't know. They may have asked him the first day that he was found to give a statement, or he may have left the scene before they actually got there. I'm not sure about that. The head coroner of Washington County, Arkansas, found Jason's death and injuries suspicious and ordered his cremation stopped and an autopsy to be performed. But the funeral home says that they did not receive the notice um, to stop the cremation because there was going to be an autopsy soon enough. So his body had already been cremated and the autopsy was never performed. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, I was say, can you close the door? <laughs> okay. oh. Sorry, my son's telling me supper's done and getting the dogs. Um, yes, so his body had already been, been cremated before that autopsy could be performed. Jason died on a Thursday night, December 9, 2021, though, as I stated earlier, for some reason, his obituary says he died on December the 10th, 2021, which was the day that he was found. I believe he was found um, close to 7 o'clock in the morning, um, 6 o'clock in the morning, sometime around then. Um, from what I understand, um, he was... He did actually pass away on December 9th, but his obituary says December 10th. That's what I what I understand um, could be inaccurate, but I believe that's true. And his obituary is the only thing you can find online at all about um, Jason Dubois' death. Before his death, Jason and his friend had been riding Jason's four-wheelers on a local train track, which is trespassing and extremely dangerous. Um, so I speculate that perhaps the local police didn't actually really have a whole lot to do with the investigation into his death since it did happen on the train track and just off of the train track. And I know the embankment and within certain footage of the train track is government property and would still be considered trespassing. I know this from when I went to a college that had a train track that ran right behind it and the teachers were always telling us you can't smoke on campus. People would go to the um, over by the train tracks to smoke and sit like on the embankment of the train track and even within like a hundred yards or something of that is considered government property and is considered trespassing. If the police see you doing it, you will be ticketed. So, um, yes, it's trespassing and dangerous, but I'm thinking that perhaps they were in charge of the main investigation since it did happen on their property. Jason's accident happened about one half mile from his home. That's about a 15 through 20 minute walk at the most. Local police said his body was found in one position and the railroad police said it was found in another position. And I had mentioned before that I had thought that there were two different stories that were given. Um, the one friend who was severely traumatized had said that he was found laying on his side, which I believe is what the Springdale, Arkansas police also stated, and the railroad police said that he was found laying on his stomach. Um, well, I guess partly on his stomach and partly on his side, but it's possible that the railroad police did not see his body until after the paramedics had arrived and checked his vitals and stuff like that. So, that is my completion of the story of Jason Dubois, though I will, like, um, if any criminal charges ever come up of, about his death or anything, um, or I get information from any other sources concerning his death, 
I will let you guys know that information. And I stated this a couple of times, not on my Mystery Mondays blog, but in my other vlogs and such. I did find out from my source um, that ironically, I selected, you know, to do Armand B. Johnson's um, case last week. I guess I did state it on that one. Um, but I it planned to do Jason's, the rest of Jason's today because I had told someone I was going to do Armand B. Johnson's the week before that, and this case just had so much information that I received um, that I wanted to do this one only, and um, I was informed that today is actually Jason's birthday, and I know I'm almost certain this is not um, going live publicly as it is supposed to be, so hopefully it airs before midnight and will actually air on his birthday. Sorry, not actually do these live, um, publicly for me for whatever reason. So now, in updates, this is the one real update that I found. Dog to assist in Crystal Turner and Kyle. I wish him and his crew the best of luck, and I hope that they are able to help. Um, I know they get a lot of scrutiny because of the whole Brian Laundry thing and everything, but they have helped a lot of people with a lot of aces, and I believe that they can help. So, that being said, um, he had stated at one point during the Brian Laundry stuff that he, or I guess it was after that, well, it was after he left the case um, concerning Brian Laundry. He had stated that he was going to go to Moab, Utah. He was invited to go there by Mr. Jensen, who is the private investigator on the case that Kylan's dad hired. And so he had announced months ago that he was going to go there, and I believe he had some personal issues and health issues that he had to deal with, possibly got COVID, I don't know for sure. Um, but now he has announced again that he will be heading to Moab, Utah to help out with that case. And um, he had made that announcement two to three days ago, I believe. And there really are no notable updates to any of the other cases that I have covered, I don't believe. Um, there are no notable updates to missing persons, cold cases within the U.S. national parks. I'll be talking about Aubrey Dameron's case next week, um, as well as probably the next one on the cold case list because I have covered Aubrey's case before. Just she is kind of a localish person and I don't want her to get forgotten by any means. And I'm sure there are several people out there that do not know anything about Aubrey's case still. So, um, she has been missing, I want to say, three years in March. So I, I will be talking about her next week, and I will let you know about any updates then. I did not see any updates on her case a while ago, so it will probably just be a summation of information that I have told before concerning her case, and therefore I will be able to do another case um, along with that. There are also no notable updates to Jason Lerl's case. However, I did mention, um, I think that was when I did my Mask Singer blog, I mentioned that there was a body that was found by some mushroom hunters in a hand-dug well in Missouri. There have actually been two bodies found recently within like the last week, I think in hand dug wells in Missouri. One was near Joplin, Missouri and was identified, though they were waiting for DNA to absolutely identify that person. Um, it was not anyone that I'm doing a case on. It was someone who there had been a fight over the cell of a car or something along that line. But there was another body that was found further south. Well, I'll say further south. Joplin's actually far, fairly south in Missouri. But, um, there was another one, I should have looked up the name of that town, but there was another body that was found in a hand-dug well by mushroom hunters in Missouri, and might actually have been closer to the middle of Missouri now that I think about it, but um, I will look to see if there is more information on that. There was a autopsy that was requested um, to be done last Thursday, 
and I know that police are most likely going to hold that information for at least a few days, possibly a week or two, um, depending on what body found yet. to find Mystery Monday's blog next Monday, which will be on the 16th. And so that's all that I have for right now. I should have looked up to see who my other person for the cold cases of missing persons within national parks in the United States is, but I did not do that. And I'm still using my phone, obviously, to do these, so I can't look stuff up while I am doing these because my computer is still kaput and i can't like if i go to look something up on my phone it will close the video from recording thank you guys for viewing and subscribing and sharing to social media i have got to where i try to do that at the first of the vlogs in case people don't watch the entire thing i do want to let people know that i do appreciate the pe the people that i have who regularly view um the few i have that subscribe and um people that share the vlogs. Um, I'm considering trying to do TikTok. I've not been interested in TikTok like at all. One of my daughters had told me that I might want to do my stuff on there because it might get more views because of the fact that TikTok is newer and fresher. Um, so I'm contemplating doing that. There's also the Reels thing they're calling it now on Facebook. So I'm um, contemplating um, different avenues to take to try to gain some popularity for my channel but i know that one of the things that would help the most is for me to be able to get those pictures in there so people can see the actual missing people what they look like um pictures of the items that they had last and stuff like that i know that that would help a great deal um so i'm planning to try to start working on that though i still need to find me an actual regular job too but um i do appreciate you guys viewing until next time everyone have a great whatever time of night or day it is in your part of the world stay safe and stay positive thank you for viewing